Hi guys, we had some questions about fast and slow block polyspermy that I got from several of you. And so let me see if I can explain this a little bit better. So let's talk about it. As you know, polyspermy means more than one sperm has gotten into the egg, and it almost always means a termination of the pregnancy at some point. It's really, really bad. So the egg goes to great extremes to prevent two sperms from getting inside the egg. That just can't happen. And two of those mechanisms are fast block polyspermy and slow block polyspermy. All right, so let's look at each of these. Fast block is pretty easy. So within seconds after the sperm fuses, to the plasma membrane of the oocyte, which is what is happening here, right? That's the precursor to fertilization. In fact, has fertilization started? Yes, because the sperm head is now through or has gotten into and past the perivitalin space. There's the zona pellucida, the sperm has penetrated that. So once this hookup occurs, and now it's going to take the sperm head inside the oocyte, right? But the minute hookup occurs, you get a massive depolarization of the plasma membrane of the oocyte. In fact, it goes from a negative 70, which is a normal membrane, resting membrane potential, it drops all the way down to plus 10. And at plus 10, if this is charged to plus 10 millivolts, a second sperm will have great difficulty hooking up with this plasma membrane. Okay, that's all there is to fast block polyspermy. Okay, everything I said. So the dispolarization prevents another spermatozoa from sticking or hooking up or adhering to the oocyte's plasma membrane. Okay, and yeah, the receptors don't work at such a charge. They still can rarely, once in a blue moon, work. Uh, but it's pretty good all by itself at deterring two sperm from getting inside the oocyte. But if that wasn't enough, we have a, something called slow block polyspermy. And this is where your questions came from. So I tried to do a little more Photoshop work to make this a little bit better. So once the sperm is inside the plasma membrane, so it's been swallowed by the oocyte's plasma membrane, and now it's inside the cytosol. Once it gets in there, it immediately releases these little orange and red balls. And those are called sperm-specific. You don't always have to say that. For our test, we'll just say phospholipase C zeta, or PLCZ. Right? So it's as simple as that. Once the sperm head gets in the cytosol or cytoplasma of the oocyte, it releases these chemicals called phospholipase C zeta. And what does that do? It binds to the endoplasmic reticulum. See, it's right here bound to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And it stimulates that rough endoplasmic reticulum to release a whole bunch of calcium ions, and they come out wave after wave after wave of these calcium ions sweep out of the cell. And they're, they're like waves, like if we dropped a stone here. They're, they're rippling all throughout the cell, and they do a couple of things. And before we talk about the anti or the inhibition of another sperm, they do do a very important thing. So... The very first thing that wave does is it hits the nucleus of the, fe the female oocyte, and that stimulates the restart of meiosis. Remember, we were stuck. Uh, we were stuck in metaphase 2 at the time of ovulation. We had a secondary oocyte. It came out, but it got stuck again in metaphase 2. And now it's going to finally... Because of this wave of calcium ions, because of this wave right here, hitting, turning around and hitting the nucleus, and the mechanisms are still not understood how this works, 
Um, but the nucleus finally finishes meiosis, uh, and it's, it's done. So that's one thing that fast block polyspermy does. That has nothing to do with really blocking anything. That's just kind of a fun fact. But the actual blocking of the second sperm comes here. So there's these cortical granules that are just floating around the, the cytoplasm of mom. Okay, so I drew them in here. So here's the, here's the egg. Here's the sperm. It's fertilized. Well, it's in the process of fertilizing. It. It's not complete yet. But we have these little red granules just wandering around, very similar to the GLUT4 transporter story that you learned in CISFIS. If, well, maybe you didn't learn that. I don't know. But it's the same story with GLUT4 transporters, where they, they go and bind to the cell membrane and do something. Uh, but that's exactly what happens. Uh, and so the wave of calcium ions hits these little red ferry boats here, and they go up and they dock to the to mom's plasma membrane. Okay, I got a picture of it here. Right? So they've went, they moved, and now they're stuck on this black line here. And that's mom's plasma membrane. And what do they do? They release their their payload. And they have two different types. It's really much more complicated than this, but for our purposes, this is fine. They release two types of molecules. We're just calling them proteolytic enzymes and we're calling them polysaccharoids. Right? You got it? Hopefully that, that makes sense. So when they get hit by the wave of calcium, they go to the plasma membrane and they release polysaccharoids and proteolytic enzymes. It's more complicated than that, but that's plenty deep for us. All right? Now the question is, what do those two molecules do? The polysaccharoids soak into the zona pellucida, so they just, they're already soaked in here to the zona pellucida. Uh, we'll say they're the green ones. I didn't label them, could be, we'll just call the polysaccharoids the green ones. They soak into the plasma membrane, and what do they do? They make it get very thick and stiff and hard. So it, it's very difficult for another sperm to get through the zona pellucida. Remember, it has to cut its way through the ZP proteins. And now it's, it's, they're all swollen and stuck together, so it's difficult. That's what the polysaccharoids do. That's what these little, we we'll call them the green little balls here. Right? What about the blue little balls? What do they do? Let's see in a minute. And by the way, so this has a name in and of itself. This thickening and stiffening of the zona pellucida because of the, the action of the green little balls. That's called the zona reaction. Zona reaction. The zona reaction is a part of slow block polyspermy. See how that works? Okay, what about the blue little balls? Uh, cortical granules release the little, we're calling those the proteolytic enzymes. These, these ones. These little blue ones. And this is just like a simple simplification, but what do they do? They go after the ZP3 molecules, which are already stiff and swollen up. Uh, they actually attack the ZP3, and we know that's the binding site for said one of the sperm. So they attack those and mutate them and destroy them and inflame them to the point they don't work very good either. Okay, so we got three mechanisms now that, that inhibit polyspermy. Right? We got a depolarization of the plasma membrane. We got a thickening of the zona pellucida. And we got a inflammation and destruction of the ZP3 proteins themselves. And all of those together will strongly inhibit two sperm from getting in to the oocyte and kind of double fertilizing it, if you will. Okay, makes sense. I hope that's, I don't know how, how else I can explain it. That's the best I can do, so hopefully you understand that. All right, good luck on the exam tomorrow.